What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and so I wanted to make a video on Luka Doncic who is tearing up the NBA right now, but I'm also aware there's been a lot of content on Luka, so this video will be a bit different. Basically, it'll be in an interactive challenge or quiz format. I'll show you a play where Luka makes a critical decision, as he's a great decision maker, and then right before he makes that decision, I'll pause the play and it'll be up to you to try to guess what decision Luca is going to make. It's very simple, you'll catch on real quick. There will be seven plays in total, so keep track of your score if you'd like. So, let's get right into it. Let's first take a look at a few of Luca's passes. So here, he comes off a double screen, and then he's faced with a choice. Should he hit Maxi Kleba on the roll to the basket, or should he whip it over to Dorian Finney-Smith in the opposite corner? I'll give you five seconds to make your decision. Terrific pass here from Luka, and when we rewatch the play, we see what happens. Danny Green and LeBron miscommunicate a bit on the switch on top. That's what allows Kleba to roll freely toward the basket. Now it's up to Avery Bradley to try to stop the play from the weak side, and what Luka notices is that Avery Bradley is leaning toward the ball. That's the thing to notice here, his momentum is going toward the paint, and the timing is perfect from Luka, so he's passing it while Bradley is moving in, so there's no way Bradley can recover to the corner in time. Number 2, so here again a pick and roll with Luka and Kleba, and the question is, should Luka hit Kleba on the roll, or should he hit Seth Curry coming up to the top on the lift? Another beauty from Luka, and we see here that the Nuggets are showing on this pick and roll, and they momentarily send two to the ball. So there will be a two on one on the weak side like last time, and Luka has a short amount of time to exploit this. And this time, Will Barden, the help defender, is in good position on the weak side tag. He's there early, but again Luka notices the weak side defender's momentum. Barden is already leaning back toward the perimeter to get out to a shooter, and so Luka delivers the bullet pass inside the Kleba, noticing the momentum of Barden. Number 3, another pick and roll against the Nuggets, and here Luka comes off of the screen, and should he A, hit Kleba on the roll here, or B, whip it over to Curry in the weak side corner. Here's 5 seconds. Now let's actually go back to play number 2 first to notice what Jokic does on his pick and roll defense. He is level with the ball screener as the pick and roll happens, and that makes any kind of pocket pass a very tough squeeze, and it takes a spectacular pass by Luka to score. But on this play, notice how he's several feet off of Kleba, so he's not level with the ball screen, and this leaves a much bigger gap for a quick pocket pass. And in terms of reading the weak side, while Barden is in the lane looking to help, notice the distance between Kleba and Barden. That's more than enough room for a pocket pass. Also notice that the other weak side defender Millsap is not at the nail, but he's hugged up to Porzingis, making the pocket pass the right read. Alright, last pick and roll clip with Luka. So here we have a fourth quarter pick and roll against the Knicks, and so what should Luka do? Should he hit Dwight Powell on the roll to the basket? Should he hit the opposite corner who's off the screen but best believe he's there? Or should he hit the strong side corner? So I definitely think this one was a bit tougher and I made sure to use this clip because it's a good example to not forget about the strong side. Every instance so far we've seen, the best read was to look to the weak side, but here Luka notices that RJ Barrett has crept into the paint, and when that happens from the strong side, the best option is almost always to hit whoever he's helping off of, and here the pass creates an advantage for DeLon Wright. Now, some of you may have noticed the weak side defender creeping into the paint, and so a pass to the opposite corner may not have been a bad option, but some of you may have also noticed that Marcus Morris is applying great ball pressure, so any pass to that weak side would have been a much tougher one. 
On to number five. So here, Luka recognizes that Porzingis has a mismatch in the post. So the question is, should he pass it to Porzingis here as he's being fronted in the post, or should he pass it to DeLon Wright on the weak side? Terrific job by Doncic to see the whole floor. We know this that Porzingis is being fronted in the post, so getting it to him on an over-the-top pass is a pretty good option, but Luka notices that Hassan Whiteside is coming over from the weak side, so the best option is to hit right, who is the open player on the weak side. A pretty simple read when we pause it like this, but honestly, not a read a lot of high school or college players would have made. Now before we go to our final two questions, I just want to point out that on three of the five plays I've shown thus far, Luca has made his pass with an overhead pass. He's incredibly accurate on these passes using his height to see over the defense, but I think it's notable because for any player, an overhead pass is really a devastating pass to throw it over the top of any defense. Alright, so so far we've looked at 5 Luka passes, but I think an underrated part of his game is how he's a pretty smart off-ball player. So here we're going to look at 2 plays where Luka is off the ball. So number 6, he gives it up first, and then at this point right here, based on what we see on the screen, what should Luka do? Should he stay where he's at? Should he cut under the basket? Or should he come up for the dribble handoff? This is an underutilized concept in basketball, and the concept I'm talking about is that Luka is in the dunker spot and Kleba is driving right at him. So being in the dunker spot, he should move to the other dunker spot when he's being driven at. This creates space for Kleba, and here Luka gets the pass. And hopefully some of you remember me talking about this concept two months ago in my video about St. Joseph's offense, how they utilize this concept very well, playing in the dunker spot and moving to the other side when being driven at. Alright, last one. So here Luka gives it up and then he has an important off-ball decision to make. Should he A. Stay where he's at on the perimeter, B. Move along the perimeter to his right, or C. Cut to the basket? Great job by Luka to cut and then find the open man. And it's important to understand why this was the right cut and also why I paused the clip so early. So I paused the clip so early because right here we can recognize that the Mavericks are running a pick and pop with Porzingis. KP is going to flare out to the top, so if Doncic stays where he's at, he'd be getting in the way. So what a lot of coaches teach in this situation is for the player one pass away from the pick and pop to cut to the basket. This can create space for KP or here when Kent Bazemore makes a full rotation, this cut gets Luka open because it counters what the defense is trying to do. Now if you chose move along the perimeter, you can give yourself a point for that too because that would have been a much better option than simply standing where he was at. And just to emphasize how important spacing is on the pick and pop, let's look at this play. So the Spurs run a pick and pop with Aldridge, and we see that White doesn't cut. He's a bit further on the perimeter than Luka was, but I would have liked to seen a cut because you'll notice that when Aldridge catches it, this allows Jamal Murray to stunt at Aldridge and distract him without really any consequence. If White had cut two seconds earlier, he could have taken Murray with him, creating more space for Aldridge. Well, there you have it guys, and if you have a moment, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Number one, did you like this video format as a way to teach the game and highlight an individual player? Two, how could it be improved next time? Were the questions too easy? Too hard? And three, if you kept track of your score, what was your score out of seven? Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.